Okay, welcome back to episode three, where we're going to talk about the uh, primary train safety systems, including CIFA, PZB, and LZB. First, let's start with CIFA. CIFA is, uh, it's an abbreviation for, again, for a long German word or phrase, and uh, but basically what it is, is it is a dead man switch. So CIFA requires you to activate a switch approximately every 30 seconds. And if you neglect to do this, you will get a light on your dashboard. And only for a couple seconds. And if you continue to neglect to hit the switch, you will then get a buzzer for a couple seconds. And then the train will apply the brakes. And it does this just to make sure that you are... Um, in control of the train, awake, alive, and uh, not incapacitated. It's actually a very simple system. It just requires you to pay attention. So we'll um, do a short run here where I will not acknowledge CIFA. So after about 30 seconds, you're going to see a white light that says CIFA appear on the center console above the T. Um, couple seconds after that, you're going to hear a buzzer, and then you're going to see some um, red errors pop up that is telling me that the train is braking. Now, you are able to recover from a CIFA break uh, without waiting for it to fully stop. So what I will do to recover is I will press the CIFA key, which is spacebar. Um, I will put the power controller to off or neutral using the 5 key on my key. And I need to wait for the safety system to come back online. And you can see when that happens, because you'll get a couple of blue icons. PZB and 85 will show back up. And just a couple seconds after that, you'll see I can regain power, uh, get power going to the train, and we're on our way. But we did still slow to about um, 45 kph. So it, it can interrupt your trip. Okay, so that's CIFA. Pretty straightforward. Just pay attention to your train and remember to hit your spacebar occasionally. Now let's talk about PZB and Inducy. This is probably the most difficult concept that you'll need to master as a beginner in order to keep your train moving. PZB is a term that refers to technologies that allow the train to communicate with the track to enforce certain safety standards. Inducy is a specific technology that is a form of PZB. And PZB90 is the specific Inducy protocol that applies to most German passenger trains that travel up to 160 km per hour. Anything faster needs a more robust safety system. The takeaway from all of that is that I may use the term PZB and Inducy. I kind of use them interchangeably, even though technically they're not. This is a diagram of the basic layout of an Inducy system. You need to understand this diagram to understand Inducy. Remember that the entire point of this system is to prevent you from accidentally placing your train in the area marked Danger Zone on the diagram. Let's walk through the process from left to right. The first signal on the left is a VR0 semaphore. If you recall from the last episode, a VR0 is a distant aspect that tells us we are approaching HP0, which is a stop indication. 
So in order to comply with the VR0, we need to start slowing down, unless we're already going pretty slow for some other reason. As we pass the VR0 signal, we will cross a 1000 Hz magnet that is energized by the signal. Our train has an induction sensor that will trigger, and our inducey system will know that we have crossed the magnet. There will be no indication that the inducey system has activated, but you need to acknowledge the signal within four seconds to avoid application of emergency brakes. You do this by pressing the enter key on your numpad. Once this occurs, you will see the blue 85 begin to flash. A yellow 1000 Hz indicator will illuminate. You will receive a warning that references a maximum speed of 85 kph. At this point, we are barreling towards a stop signal with only 1,000 meters to go. The Inducy system will now monitor your speed to ensure you are slowing down your train. You have 23 seconds from the time that you crossed that first magnet to bring your speed down to 85, and you must do so quickly. The software will monitor your deceleration against a curve, and if it thinks that you are decelerating too slowly, then it will apply the brakes before the 23 seconds has elapsed. Now we've slowed to below 85 and are approaching the next inducy phase, the 500 Hz magnet. After we are 700 meters beyond the 1000 Hz magnet, the yellow icon will clear from our dash. But if the main signal is still showing HP0, the 500 Hz magnet will be active. When we cross it, inducy will enforce a new braking curve to make sure we slow from 65 down to 45. You may have noticed a gap in those curves. The 1000 Hz magnet got you down to 85. The 500 Hz magnet expects you to be at, uh, at or below 65 when you cross it. Remember that Inducy is only there to ensure you are driving safely. So if you are approaching a red signal, then you should be well below 85 by the time you cross that 500 Hz magnet, as it is only 250 meters from the signal. Assuming that you've made it this far, but for some reason neglected to halt the train before the stop signal, you will cross a 2000 Hz magnet, which will immediately trip the emergency brakes and prevent you from entering the danger zone, which starts 250 meters beyond the signal. Now let's say that the main signal changes from HP0 to a less restrictive signal after you cross the 1000 Hz magnet. Ducey only talks to the magnets on the track, and it has no idea that the signal is no longer red. So we must continue to slow our train down to 85 or below after crossing the first magnet, but we don't need to worry about the 500 Hz magnet because it will not be active. So does this mean you have to plot along at 85 km per hour for the rest of the 1250 meters? No. After you have traveled 700 meters beyond the first magnet, can manually release yourself from Inducy as long as you can positively confirm that the signal ahead is not red. You can do this by pressing the period key on your numpad. And what happens if you release yourself and the signal is still red? As soon as you cross the 500 Hz magnet, no matter your speed, the emergency brakes will be activated. If you have already passed the 500 Hz magnet when the signal changes aspect, then you cannot release yourself you'll have to continue at no more than 45 kph until released by the system. The final topic for PZB is restrictive monitoring. If you slow the train to below 10 km per hour for 15 seconds while in any part of the 1250 meter monitoring zone, you will be placed in restrictive monitoring. In this mode, you cannot exceed 45 kph. If you happen to be in the 500 Hz magnet braking curve when this uh, restrictive monitoring activates, you cannot exceed 25 kph. Okay, that's a lot of information, so let's summarize and add some practical information. First, you need to acknowledge any active 1000 Hz magnet. How do you know if the magnet is active? If the distant signal is showing slow, which is VR2, or stop, which is VR0, or if there is a digital or metal speed indicator that shows the speed will drop below 90, you will need to um, acknowledge the magnet. Now there is some gray area with what speeds are included and need to be acknowledged. Some sources say 85, some say 95, some say it can vary. 
There are also sometimes speed sensor magnets that may not even enforce inducey if you cross them going slow enough already. Be safe, just acknowledge anything under 100, as there is no penalty for over-acknowledging. If the magnet was not active and you acknowledged it, you will not get the yellow 1000 Hz indicator light in the cab. Now that you've acknowledged the upcoming restriction, you need to slow down to no more than 85. If you forget this number, just look at the blinking blue light on your dash. If you're traveling at higher speeds, say 140 to 160, this is going to require a pretty firm braking application. But don't fixate on the 85 number. If you know the upcoming speed limit is 60, or you have a red signal ahead, then just reduce to 60 or below so you're ready for either the new speed limit or the next magnet. So let's watch a demonstration of how to do this correctly. Okay, so here we have an upcoming speed restriction of 60. And you can see at the track, at the base of that post, is a magnet along the right side of the track. That magnet will be active because of the speed restriction. I recognized this uh, a couple seconds ago, and you heard me put my power level into neutral and then move it into reverse. And if you look at the HUD, you can see I'm already braking. Uh, this is why you really have to pay attention in this simulator. If you wait to do this until after you pass that post, you are going to have a very difficult time slowing your train down quick enough to avoid the braking curve. So I've already started the process of slowing. And you can see I'm going pretty fast, almost 160. As soon as I cross that magnet, I'm going to acknowledge it. You're going to hear a tone. and Then you're going to see the yellow 1000 hertz warning pop up on the uh, center display, as well as a warning reminding me that I need to slow to 85. Okay, we're slowing down. You can see I have a uh, maximum brake applied. I am not in emergency, but I do have a uh, maximum brake on the power handle applied. We are slowing down. Okay, directly in front of me, you can see the next magnet on the track. That is the 500 hertz magnet. Now, our distance signal that we just passed, it was showing a green aspect. It was not showing that I have a stop signal up here. So this magnet is not active. However, at the main signal, just up the track, that is where my 60 kph speed limit begins. You can see that I slowed well beyond 85. I'm currently at about 68, and I just moved the power controller into neutral because it takes a, a couple seconds for the um, brakes to come off. So uh, I should be pretty close to 60 by the time that happens. Okay, here we have reached the main signal, and you can see the 6 on the top shows my new speed limit as of the signal, and I have another warning down below showing that I will be 60 at the next signal, and I need to acknowledge that also as I pass the So you can see I acknowledge the magnet, you heard the beep, and the 1000 Hertz yellow icon is back in my central display. However, I don't have to make any additional speed adjustments because I'm already well below 85, and the aspect on that signal was green. I'm not expecting a stop up ahead.
Okay, you'll see that my 1000 Hz light just went out. That is because I am now 700 meters from that last 1000 Hz magnet that we crossed. What that means is uh, at this point I can release from PZB if I want to, because I can see up ahead the light is green. So I'm fully okay to release. However, at this point, I'm concentrating on slowing down, so I'll release once we get moving again. And while we're here, uh, it's a good time to point out this sign that I missed in the last tutorial. This H sign that you can see right in front of us, that is a halt board. That is where you should stop your train for um, servicing the platform. And also, if you look at my center console, you see I have a warning with a yellow background, and I don't know if you can read it on the video, but it's telling me that I can't exceed 85 kilometers per hour. Now that I'm stopped, and if you watch in just a few seconds, it will put me into restrictive monitoring mode because I have I will have been traveling under 10 kilometers per hour for 15 seconds, and when that happens, uh, it will further restrict me, and I will not be able to exceed 45 kilometers per hour. Now, if I had triggered the or if the red the uh, 500 hertz magnet had been active when I went into restrictive mode, then I would not be able to exceed 25 kilometers per hour. Okay, we're about to apply power to get out of the station, and if you watch shortly after we start to depart, I will release us from Inducey. You'll hear a beep, and you'll see the yellow warning box go away. Okay, we're jumping forward to the next PZB activation. I'm just going to let this one run because it is identical to the last one.
Okay, we're now sitting at a platform a little farther down the route. We had a similar Inducey activation. We pulled into the platform, and you can see that I am under restrictive mode with the, I passed the 1000 hertz magnet. However, in this case, the signal ahead of me is red. So, when I cross that magnet just in front of me, that 500 hertz magnet will be active. You'll see a 500 hertz magnet activation on my console, and it will put a further speed restriction on me. Okay, so I cross the magnet. I have the red 500 hertz uh, icon on the screen. Now, if I had crossed this on the main line where I had not stopped at a platform, I would have a speed restriction of 45. However, because I stopped at that platform, and so I was under 10 kilometers per hour for um, more than 15 seconds, I was in put in restrictive mode. And because of that, my current speed restriction is 25 kilometers per hour instead. I cannot release from this because it's a 500 hertz magnet. And I wouldn't want to and shouldn't release from this because there's a red light in front of me. So next, because this is the end of the route, what we're going to do is approach the red light. We're going to increase our speed or keep it 15, 20 kilometers per hour. And we're going to run through the red light so you can see the effect of the 2000 hertz magnet. Okay, so you just saw that I was released from all the PZB protection, and that's because we have traveled 250 meters beyond the 500 hertz magnet. Now, in the real world, I don't think that would have happened. I think that magnet would have been a few meters closer to the signal. I'm assuming that is probably just uh, something to do with how they built the route uh, and laid out the track in Zuzi. However, there's really no practical uh, problems with it because I only have a few meters where I'm not under protection. And that 2000 hertz magnet that I'm about to cross over is still active and it will still do the same thing, which is apply my brakes. Okay, we trip the magnet, our uh, brakes are applied, in order to recover from this, we'll move our power level or power lever to off, and we will use our PZB release key and give it a couple seconds to reset, and then we'll be able to move forward again. But as you can see, the system did what it was designed to do. I approached the stoplight at about the max speed I could under restrictive uh, operating rules, and I crossed it, and it stopped me before I got too far beyond it. Okay, one more feature of PZB to discuss. The PZB command button, which is numpad zero by default. Let's use a situation that you may encounter while driving in Zuzi. There you are, proceeding along under PZB, and you get a VR zero, which is a distant signal indicating an upcoming stop. When you reach that signal, you are met with this indication. Do you remember what this means? We briefly discussed it during the signaling tutorial. This is a substitute signal, and tells you that you can proceed past the stoplight. The main signal is malfunctioning and displaying a red signal, but the signaler has overridden it and displayed the three white dots, which are the substitute. So now we have a problem. We have a red light, which is activating the 2000 Hz magnet and will stop our train should we attempt to cross it. But we have the signaler's permission to proceed. So what do we do? The PZB command button allows us to ignore the magnet. So once we have determined that we can proceed, and we can at a max speed of 40, which is a limitation of the substitute signal, 
we need to hold the PZB order button and cross the magnet. During the time that we are holding the button, we will flash lights and give oral warnings to make sure we know that the button is depressed because willfully passing a stop indicator is kind of a big deal. In a real train, this button press will also be recorded to a log file in the software. After we cross the magnet, we can release the button and continue along at 40 until the next main signal, at which time we can proceed via signal indication. Okay, that is it for PZB. Um, before we move on to LZB, I just want to reiterate that PZB is probably one of the most complicated systems um, in ZUSI. And it is um, very frustrating if you continue to trigger it. So review the manual, watch this video, go out and practice. I will put the name of this particular route um, in the description. And from the starting platform, if you just floor it up to 160, you will hit a speed restriction um, not too long after you, you hit line speed so you can practice your PZB. The stop light that I just, um, I just went through is at the very end of the route. Unfortunately, there's not another one uh, before that. So good luck. Now onto our final safety system, LZB. Whereas PZB is a system for the train to talk to the track, LZB allows the train to talk to the signals in real time. LZB, or an equivalent, is required to travel at speeds above 160. The reason PZB is ineffective at these speeds is not necessarily due to PZB, but due to the spacing of the signals. A train traveling at 250 km per hour simply cannot stop safely in the distance between a distant signal and a main signal. LZB works by ignoring the standard signaling and instead breaks up the track into longer blocks. The information from the track side signals is fed into the central LZB controller, which then takes your train's tilt status and braking performance into account when sending you an in-cab indication of upcoming speed restrictions. LZB interfaces with your AFB, or cruise control, to restrict your maximum speed. The most restrictive speed that is set by LZB and AFB will apply to your train. For example, if your cruise control is set to 300, but LZB is restricting your speed to 200, your train will not exceed 200. And the opposite is true as well. If LZB allows you to travel faster than your AFB handle is configured, your AFB handle will override LZB. This is very convenient as it means that you can set your AFB handle to full speed and LZB will take over. Let's demonstrate this. Keep in mind that this is not a detailed video of how to drive the ICE unit, but with a quick peek at the manual, you should be able to figure it out pretty quickly. As we start the video, we are proceeding under PZB control, which is indicated by the lit 85 icon on the dashboard. The lit B icon shows that our LZB system is operational and ready to take over. The throttle is fully forward, and I am controlling the speed with the cruise control lever on the left. Very shortly, you will see that we are going to pass an LZB sign, which will warn us that we are entering an LZB controlled section of track. After the entire train has passed the sign and is fully in the LZB zone, LZB will activate. When this happens, PZB deactivates. You will see the 85 icon go dark. Be replaced with the U icon, indicating that LZB is now active. Now that LZB is active, let's talk about the relevant in-cab displays. At the bottom of the speedometer is the upcoming speed indicator, in this case 130, which is also the current speed. The first few segments of this LZB zone are quite short and not what you would typically see during an LZB section. You can see the distance until you reach the new speed zone in the center of the cab display. The orange LED indicators reach up to 250 meters. So, 
in 250 meters, we will have a speed restriction of 130 kilometers per hour. And here you can see that I have advanced the AFB lever on the left for my speed control um, all the way forward. But if you look at my speed control indicator on the speedometer, which is the small red arrow, you can see it's still set at 130. And that's because LZV is limiting my speed to 130 because it is the more restrictive speed. Okay, now we've entered a more typical part of the LZB zone. So let's look at our indicators. First, you can see the small red arrow on my speedometer has advanced to 200. That means that our current maximum speed is 200, and so the train will accelerate to that because I'm not restricting its speed with my cruise control lever. The upcoming speed is currently 200, but that's because we don't actually have a restrictive speed in the next 10 kilometers. If you look at the center of the display that shows us the distance to the next speed zone, you can see that the LEDs actually go all the way to the top, which is 4,000. And at the very top, there is the number 9,800. So our next restrictive speed zone is at least 9.8 kilometers in front of us. Now that can change, but it won't change in such a dramatic fashion as to prevent you from being able to stop. So our next restrictive speed zone will eventually show up um, on these displays and we'll see the center display start to count down as we approach it. And just to reiterate, you can see that our distance to next speed zone is still 9,800 meters. That just means that within the next 9,800 meters, we do not have a speed restriction. It does not look out farther, or at least it does not display in our cab any farther than 9.8 kilometers. Okay, as you can see, we've reached 200 kilometers per hour, and LZB has stabilized it. So we've skipped ahead to further down the track until just before the next speed change. So in just a moment, you'll hear a buzzer, which should alert you to look at your dash, and then you'll see the uh, speed restriction and the countdown.
we're now approaching the deceleration point. When we when we get closer, uh, in just a couple of seconds, you're going to hear a buzzer, and you're going to see a red G illuminate. And that is your indication that the train is about to start decelerating along a deceleration curve. And uh, sometimes it can't decelerate fast enough. So if it starts to lose the braking curve, that G icon will start to flash. And that's your indication that you need to apply your own brakes to get it back down below the curve. If it stays above the deceleration curve and you don't address it, the emergency brakes will apply. As you can see, the train has begun to decelerate. At this point, I still have been completely hands off. I haven't touched a, a train control. It's doing this all on its own, and it's trying to stay ahead of the red arrow, which is following my speedometer needle. However, I can already tell that the red arrow is catching up fairly quickly to the speedometer needle. And so normally what would happen is the G would start to flash, and that's my indication that I need to go hands on the brake to slow the train down uh, at a brisker pace. And then I can um, take the brakes off and the train will resume its own braking curve once I've gotten it under better control. Unfortunately, I, um, I saw that we were going to get into that situation and I didn't let it go to the flashing G, so you won't get to, to view that here. Okay, the buzzer sounded, indicating to us that we have a further speed restriction. We are now going to be restricted to 100 in about 2,500 meters. Okay, our next cab indication is the yellow end light, E-N-D-E. -E. This is telling us that we are coming to the end of the LZB zone. You can also see that coming up on the timetable. We need to acknowledge this with a PZB release press, which is the period key on the numpad. If we don't acknowledge it, the brakes will apply. And all this is letting us know is that once we leave the LZB section and the um, LZB lights go out, the PZB system will rearm and we will once again need to take full control of the train. Okay, so here is the flashing G and the intermittent buzzer. That is just telling me that I am getting behind the braking curve and I need to intervene to get my speedometer needle underneath the uh, LZB restriction.
OK, you can see that the end light has gone out, the U or U symbol has gone out, and my 85 is back on, indicating that I'm once again under PZB control. So starting now, I need to start acknowledging signals um, and following all the other PZB rules. While under LZB, I was not acknowledging any sort of signal. I was really not even paying attention to the track side signals. I was following the in-cab signals only. The warning you hear in the background about AFB, that's just because I disabled the cruise control. Now that um, I'm nearing the end of the line, I'm going to take a more active role in driving the train and not, not rely on the cruise control system. Okay, the final thing I will say about LZB is it is really a German railway signaling system. There is another system called ETCS, which is a Europe-wide system, but is also actually being implemented in other countries around the world, such as Mexico and Saudi Arabia. The goal of ETCS is to unify cross-border travel um, and make it so train systems from different European countries can operate on tracks uh, uh, at, in their neighboring countries safely. I don't know for sure if ETCS is implemented in ZUSI, but judging by the amount of information on the system that is in the ZUSI 3 manual, I suspect it is. I'm just not sure which routes have it, so be aware that you may need to learn that system on your own as well. Okay, that's it. I think we've covered everything that we need to know for safety systems. We should now be able to drive the vast majority of trains and routes. Um, just get out there and keep practicing with PZB especially, but also LZB if you like these um, faster inner city expresses. Have fun.